Hey guys, I'm Mike Lowe. Thanks for checking out episode two of our Arizona Cardinals offseason playthrough. If you missed episode one, it's up on the channel. Make sure you check that out. We went through free agency already, and we are now at the start of the draft. And if you remember from episode one, we were talking about the idea of maybe moving down from pick four to pick six. We have a couple players that had round one grades on them that we have fully scouted to know that they are top five talents. And so do we want to get cute here and maybe say, like, well, let's try to trade down and maybe get them out of a bit of a bargain, pick up some extra draft picks. We had a trade we looked at in episode one with the Giants, and it's something I've given a little bit further thought to. And that further thought has to do with the team picking number five, the Los Angeles Chargers, who have nothing but a bear cabinet at defensive tackle. Therefore, I'm way too scared to trade back. It's not worth getting cute to me. I want the players I want to get. We are not going to be trading back here. We are going to be picking fourth. And be sure and stick around for the end of this video. When we will take a deep dive into perhaps the best tool that's available in the Madden modding community, and that's the progression tool. It completely changes how the game handles progression. It does not use XP anymore. It applies to rookies you just drafted. It still takes into account like a dev trade and things like that. Guys, it is awesome. So be sure to stick around to see all those details. Now, I'm pretty sure these first three picks are going to be quarterbacks. I don't know if Daniels will go two. I, I would probably take him two here with the uh, the full reports here showing for the quarterbacks. And I'm like 99% certain these two teams are going to go quarterback. Uh, you would think the Bears would take Caleb Williams, but if they're the only team kind of in this top three that I can see maybe not doing that. And so uh, there is a chance they would pick a defensive tackle. They could use it as well. So that's kind of the only pick I'm a little bit worried about. I think if Caleb Williams goes one, we know we're getting our defensive tackle at four. I can say that pretty confidently. Now, if you followed my channel before and have watched me draft in Madden, you know one of the rules that I do is I do not trade during the draft. I wish the AI teams would, or maybe there'll be a mod in the future with the community there that will eventually have the teams trading during the draft. It's, it's crazy to me that that's not in this game, especially because it used to be, but I don't want to give myself that advantage. So at this point, we're going to be making 13 picks in this draft. It's going to be wild. So Caleb Williams goes to the Bears. That's what we were hoping to see, and it makes a lot of sense. Jaden Daniels going second there to the Commanders. And the third pick, Patriots go quarterback as well, Drake May out of North Carolina. So top three picks, all quarterbacks. That's kind of what we were thinking would happen. And now we're really in the driver's seat here. We're going to get the top player at any position we want outside of quarterback. This is one of the reasons why we wanted to move, didn't want to move on from Kyler Murray. Not only that, but also the, the financial reasons we talked about in episode one. So yeah, I, I think we know what our decision is going to be. I'm going to give it one more look though, but we're in a really good spot. Here's what my board looks like right now. We, of course, have Byron Murphy the second at the top, followed by Malik Neighbors, two players that we have scouted as top five talents. That The question is, which one do we take? And I, I really am thinking we're going to go Byron Murphy here. Would love to get a big playmaking receiver who uh, could really open up the offense a little bit. But, guys, you know, receivers aren't involved in every single play. Defensive tackles can be. The only red flag that we even have with Byron Murphy is that injury rating of C. That is a little scary. That block shedding is also scary in a good way. So is impact blocking. He just looks to be a really nice player that can not only play run defense. If he was just a run defender, I would not be picking him here fourth. But the fact that he seems very athletic and is going to be able to get in and, and really disrupt the, the passing game of teams that we're playing against and just can cause some havoc that can also open up some of the pressure opportunities for our defensive end. So this just seems to be a, a pick that makes a lot of sense for us. But make no mistake, it's not an easy choice. Malik Neighbors is a really nice player who would fit our offense, kind of short passing game, can make some plays with the ball in his hands. And he's also a year younger. He's got a B injury rating, but he's also got a lot of Bs just kind of across the board. I think he's going to be a really nice player. You love seeing that A catching. But again, I, to me, just a, a disruptive defensive tackle is a more important player than a playmaking receiver. Not to mention, we do have some other opportunities where we can probably look to receiver a little bit later on. I know a lot of you are probably freaking out seeing his 40 time. Hey, he might drop just like just like he might in real life if you know with a 40 time like that or something. So, I really loved his cone drill and his shuttle. The, those scores are just awesome to be. Uh, I mean, almost in top two on all of four of those scores. 
is really, really awesome. I love acceleration on a receiver like this with the, with agility. You know, speed's good, and maybe that would be a little bit different if that was also like a top 540, but it's not. And so I think we just got to take a risk here with the you know, potential for an injury. It's, oh, it's It so goes against what I kind of want to do here building this team, but I think this guy's too good. He's at a position that's just too important as we start to build this team out. Not to mention, when we look at receivers, I have a lot of guys. There's like 13, I think I counted, that have like a round two to three grade or higher. So we're going to have two more opportunities before the 36th pick to go receiver if we want. And we'll have to see how the draft board falls. Uh, defensive tackle, I think there were eight players in that same range. So again, a pretty high number, but it's just too hard for me to pass up a defensive tackle that we think can be just a, a guy who can just plug things up in the run game and can also get in and disrupt the, the pass. So Byron Murphy out of Texas, he is our pick. Six foot one, 308, 22 year old, and he comes out as normal. So dang. Maybe the injury rating was a clue. Dang, I've never picked a normal dev. Well, you, you know I'm not cheating on this. I've never picked a normal dev player in the top five. Wow. That's pretty wild. That's cool. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed. But I still think he'll come in with a pretty high overall. It, this can still work out, but wow, that's surprising. I was really hoping he was going to be like an X-Factor defensive tackle. Ah, all right, that's okay. We've got to move on. I love that they don't show the overall. I kind of wish they also didn't show dev rate for normal. I love that they hide it for the others. So that's okay. We've got to move on. I'm not just going to get desperate and pick another defensive tackle, but the fourth pick is in, and it's a normal dev defensive tackle. Flame away, guys. Let me know what you think. Terry and Arnold goes to the Chargers. J.J. McCarthy goes sixth overall to the Giants, and we had him fully scouted, and I think he was like a third or fourth round grade, so that's, that's going to be a rough pick for them. Titans with the seventh pick go left tackle Joe Alt. Falcons at number eight go Latu at left end. We originally had Dallas Turner pretty high, but had him scouted as a late first, early second, but the Bears grab him with pick number nine out of Alabama. Another left tackle goes at pick 10 is Fashanu to the Jets from Penn State. Another offensive lineman off the board, Troy Fontenot at pick 11 to the Vikings. Pick 12. I like Jared Verse, but he goes to the Broncos. We didn't have him super high. He was originally a guy we were kind of maybe thinking of, could have, you know, snuck into maybe our, our first pick there in the draft. But uh, nonetheless, he goes to the Broncos. Braylon Trice, a guy I like a lot in real life. He goes probably a little earlier than I would have thought in this draft and in real life, but he goes to the Raiders. Another player out of Washington picked in this draft. The same as the Saints going with a lineman at pick 14. It's Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. The Titans at pick 15 go Brock Bowers. He was listed as a top five potential. Didn't have him fully scouted. I think he's going to be a really special player. He was under consideration for us a little bit, having Trey McBride already at tight end, it didn't make a lot of sense. But what I'm starting to learn here is we're about 11 picks away, and there still has not been a receiver picked. So we're talking Marvin Harrison Jr. is falling big time. Neighbors is still out there, a guy we were considering taking fourth overall. So... This is starting to shape up. To be fair, there hasn't been an, another defensive tackle taken either, so let's see what else we see in this draft. Well, there's another defensive tackle. Pick 16 is the Seahawks going Chris Jenkins out of Michigan. Pick 17, Jaguars go Jackson Powers Johnson, center out of Oregon. Next, it's Oregon State tackle Fuega, who goes to the Bengals at pick 18. Rams at pick 19 go Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback out of Alabama. There have been a lot of linemen taken so far, and the Steelers make it another at pick 20. They go left guard out of BYU, Kingsley Sua Mataya. Another defensive tackle off the board at pick 21. The Dolphins go Jerzon Newton, defensive tackle out of Illinois. And we finally have our first receiver off the board. The Eagles at pick 22 go Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, Ohio State. We're five picks away now from when we pick again in the first round. So let's take a look at my favorites list. Of course, we still have neighbors there, a guy we we're considering picking at number four overall. There's also Rome Odunzi, who is a receiver out of Washington. And these are the only two guys that have like a first round grade that's not even a mix of round one or two. So these are you know kind of far and away the best two players that we had here, of course, with neighbors being a top five talent. Be a dream scenario to have him fall to us. I wish the Madden CPU teams would make trades in the draft because I would allow myself to do it. And I know I could still do it. I just feel dirty doing so. 
But gosh, this would make so much sense to do it. This is uh, th this would be the moment. Right after Harrison Jr. went, I would try to trade up and just move up a few spots to grab neighbors here. So otherwise, we have a lot of different positions at the round one and two. They're just in order by position, so it's, this is not necessarily like the order. But there's tons of other options down here. So that's the other argument, too, is like there's no reason to get desperate. We're not going to be a great team. We're not one neighbors away from suddenly like being a playoff team or anything like that, most likely. So still a long draft to go. But we still have 12 picks, and so it, I'm still even tempted to kind of break my own rule and just say, screw it. I'm, I'm a new GM. I should give myself a trade. So I'll give that some thought, but uh, I don't know if Neighbors is going to fall all the way. He's also the top player on the actual overall board as well, which is never a good sign. I'm going to allow myself one draft trade as a new GM here. Figured the other NFL teams have had chances in real life. I feel like I should get one, especially because we have 13 picks. So whatever, it's a video game. Let's send this offer here. This is actually pretty close. If you're just looking at these three picks here, I would be overpaying by like five points according to the Rich Hill draft chart. So I'm trying to make that up with a sixth round pick, which they didn't have. So I said, okay, well, what if we kick it to 2025 fifth round pick? So it's maybe a little bit of a higher ask for us, but let's just see if they go for it. They're not. Let's see if they'll do the sixth round from 2026. The next pick has All right, traded. it's a done deal. We're getting neighbors. Now, I thought about getting a little cute here. I looked through the Texans and I said, gosh, they have like nobody at corner. They're probably gonna take a corner. They're probably not gonna really pick a receiver. They're actually pretty deep everywhere. But you never know. They could be going best available player and so on. But to me, guys, don't get cute. If you're someone who is going to trade during the draft and you're just trying to like get that perfect positioning, guys, you're talking about like a fifth, sixth round pick, that kind of thing. If you're sold on a guy and, and mad and you literally have the ability to see a top five talent, don't get cute. We just said, you know what? Forget it. I don't care if I pick him 23rd or 25th or 26th. I just don't think he's going to last to 27. That's why we made the trade at the Texans. It makes sense. I have a ton of draft picks and we move forward. I mean, Malik Neighbors has to have a dev trait, right? And I don't even know if it matters all that much with the way progression works with the Madden mods, but still, we've already looked at this player. I'm super excited. I mean, this is a guy we were gonna pick at six, so let's just get this done and see what we get. All right, so he is hidden dev, 95 acceleration, 92 speed. Yeah, he's kind of exactly what we were thinking he was gonna be, so not a huge surprise there. We redeem ourselves in the first round a little bit here, and we get really the two players we were considering to be top five talents, so super excited. And guys, here's why we didn't want to get cute. Rome Undunzi is the next pick. He's the receiver that was third on the overall board. You could almost guarantee that Dallas would have taken neighbors, so we were able to steal him from the Cowboys, and, and who doesn't like that, to be honest? There's probably a few of you that maybe are upset about that, but everyone else is super excited that we stole a receiver from the Dallas Cowboys. So let's keep moving on. We have a pick coming up again here pretty soon. Pick number 36. going to be the fourth pick in the second round. So let's just let the draft come to us now. Devondre Sweat goes to the Packers. That seems like a really good fit for their 3-4 defense. I think he weighs like 845 pounds or something crazy. Uh, all kidding aside, I think it's like 368. The dude's just a monster. So he's the other defensive tackle out of Texas. I wonder if he'll have a hidden dead trait. We'll have to check it out after the draft. Pick 26, Cooper Beebe. And at pick 27, after making the trade with us, the Texans go Zach Frazier. I think he was the top center. I can't remember if there was a center picked or not, but still seems like it was a pretty good trade for the Texans, and they get a nice player. Another defensive tackle goes at pick number 28, Brandon Dorless, defensive tackle out of Oregon, goes to the Bills. Pick 29, Lions go defensive end Darius Robinson. Pick 30, guard Graham Barton goes to the Ravens. Outside linebacker slash edge player Chris Broswell out of Alabama, he's the pick for the 49ers at 31. And the final draft in round one, Edron Cooper, who did look to be like a pretty nice linebacker in this draft class out of Texas A&M, goes to the Super Bowl champion Chiefs. Day two of the draft, we have the fourth pick coming up, and it's a, a pretty straightforward thing. There are a number of players I'm actually looking at. So we're going to be in good shape. There's really only one player on the, I guess, all regions board that I don't have on my board, and it would be J.C. Latham, who is a tackle, but I would probably move this guy to right guard. He's not really a fit, as we are, I guess... According to my coaches, we want to run like more of like an agile kind of a, a elusive back kind of running scheme. And 
I kind of like power in Madden, so I don't really mind it. I'm also not marrying players to a coaching staff, especially one that I'm not really sure is going to be around super long. So this guy, I would probably move to right guard. Uh, he would just probably be a beast. I mean, he's a super, super strong player. He's massive. Uh, of course, the injury rating is a bit of a concern there, but we have run blocking checking out as A. So he is a guy I am considering, but I don't know if I would take him above the players that we already have scouted in this range, which at this point would be Quinion Mitchell or Nate Wiggins. They're similar players, but different. I think Wiggins is probably like the more explosive, maybe like the risk reward kind of player. He's gonna probably maybe generate more turnovers. He had an A for catching, as you can see there. And he's got some, he's got more top end speed. I think Mitchell's probably a little more shifty, which truthfully I'm probably more interested in in a corner. And so, although this guy may be a little flashier, faster, can catch the ball, that sort of thing, I think Mitchell might be the better coverage guy. We also play a lot of match zone. And so I kind of feel like Mitchell could be a really good fit with a guy who can play in the slot. A lot of times they're going to be pretty good at both of those. So I would probably go one of these. But again, if, if one of these players are picked, or both of them are gone, say, by the time we pick, I would maybe look at that tackle we could convert to guard. Otherwise, maybe there's a safety in the mix there. We're pretty deep with three really good safeties, but again, Buda Baker is not really long for this team, and that could open up a trade possibility where we trade his franchise contract, and he's a 90 overall. We could probably get a nice return for him. So also considering that, but I don't think I'd pick one of these safeties above a scouted cornerback. I won't be showing every single pick here moving forward, but the very first pick is Quinion Mitchell, who was the player I was going to be picking with that fourth pick in the second round. So we'll have to kind of see. Might be going Wiggins here. We do have him scouted. Otherwise, it's going to be one of those plan B or plan Cs I talked about. So we're on the clock now. It's most likely going to be Wiggins, who is still there. Truthfully, I wish we could go defensive line here. There's still some players I like. I don't want to reach, though. We are at the beginning of the second round, so when we start to see that 2-3 to three projection, I think that's just a little rushed. Yeah, if there was a guy I fell in love with or if we had scouted as like a first-round pick, certainly I would take them here. But as we look through kind of the defensive uh, players here, there's just nobody here that I'm like rushing to go pick here early second round. Even if we kind of look at, you know, edge players over here, there's just nothing there. It doesn't mean I won't later. I most certainly probably will. But I think right now our pick is going to be Nate Wiggins. So just to kind of show you again, he was the other corner we had scouted. Six foot two. You're good. You guys are going to like him. He's younger. He's six foot two. He's got a, he's probably the fastest corner in this draft or well, pretty close to it, right? First and then third at his college pro day. I just don't love those cone and shuttle drills for him. They're a little bit low. Some of that could be because of his height. So he's got a really nice jump, of course, and I still think he'll be pretty good. Again, he's, he's checked out really well. He's going to be a healthy player. Like, this guy's going to be good. Um, I would be surprised, too, if he doesn't have a dev trait. So we're getting a good player here, and as much as we could maybe try to get cued and convert a tackle to guard or grab a safety, I think we just go with the sure thing here, at least what we hope is the sure thing. It's going to be Nate Wiggins at pick 2.4, I guess 236, however you call it. Second round here for the Cardinals, Nate Wiggins. He comes in as normal dev. So two of our three picks have been normal dev, 93 speed. Still looks like he'll be a pretty decent player, and we'll have to see how we look to Quinion Mitchell, but we didn't get the choice there, so Nate Wiggins is our pick in the second round. You can see there on the left our remaining picks. We still have a ton, including three picks in the third round, so we're going to be jumping ahead to the third round, and we'll talk then. Before jumping ahead to the third round, J.C. Latham, that tackle we were going to convert to guard, he did go at the very next pick there to the Chargers. With this first pick in the third round, I know who I'm going to pick. I'm just kind of showing you who is floating around out there, but there's still some players with rounds one and two grades. But we're kind of moving down into this two to three range, and we're actually going to be going with, it's either between Austin Booker, left end, or tight end Zach Hines. And I'm going to go with Zach Hines here. I, I really like using two tight ends. I mean, this guy looks like a, just a monster run blocker. And so it's going to give us a nice option. We have really nothing behind McBride. And I think this could be really nice because right away this guy could come in and he's essentially kind of like a split starter, like kind of how uh, like a third corner or a third receiver is used. I mean, we want to try to run the ball, even though we don't really have a primary running back just yet. And I think this guy can help. Obviously, he could develop behind McBride a little bit. McBride's got two years left on his contract. He's going to want some big money. So it gives us some flexibility, but I love seeing that impact blocking A. I think this guy could be really special. He's a possession receiver, so he's got good hands. 
but his size. I mean, this guy just looks like he could be a really nice player for us. So I'm not expecting him to be like a hidden dev or anything, but I think he's a guy that could come in and he's going to get some playing time and, and hopefully uh, hope open up the run game for us. So we're going to go Zach Hines here with our first pick in the third round. And there he is. 86 acceleration, 81 speed. So he's, he's pretty athletic. Not too bad. Again, he'll come in and play. And I'm going to try to get that end here in just a couple picks. We'll see. The two teams in between us, you could argue one of them needed a tight end. One of them needed an end. So we just had to kind of go with the player that we felt would be the bigger fit for us. And that was Hines. So we'll see if we can get our end here in just a few picks. Well, that didn't work. Austin Booker goes to pick right before where I was going to pick him here to the Giants. So back to the drawing board. All right, so pivoting here, we're going to go with another corner. It's Kalen King. He's just 20 years old. He's a man-to-man -man archetype, but he's got a B zone rating. So this guy is probably going to have B man as well, and he's 20 years old. He looks like he'll be pretty healthy. I think he could be a nice player. He could obviously slot into a position where we could use some depth, and at the very least, he's a developmental player who's got some good athletic skills here. And uh, yeah, I, I just think this guy is worth kind of grabbing. He, he probably is one of the youngest, if not the youngest player in the draft. So we're going to go Kalen King here out of Penn State. With the next selection, the As you can see his ratings there. Not bad. So we've still only had one hidden dev trait player, but we're getting some guys. We'll see. Haven't been thrilled. It's like I've been thrilled with the players I've been picking, but haven't been thrilled with how they've turned out. So we'll have to see after post-draft. Our final pick in round three as we look through our favorites list. I'm skipping over some of these receivers. They'd be kind of depth guys. Sure, maybe these guys could be better than what I'm about to do here. I was really looking at a couple of ends here. But in the end, we're going to be going with Michael Hall Jr., another defensive tackle. So we're double dipping at corner. We're double dipping at defensive tackle. Guys, we have nobody behind the guy we picked number four overall. So hopefully Hall Jr. here can be a, you know at least a rotational piece. But I, I think he could be a... a Maybe a player that pops. He's a little undersized, but I'm okay with that. This guy could definitely play a three technique. Still got really good athletic traits there. He had 10 different ratings there that are in the top nine at his position group there. So that's pretty good. And uh, again, just an athletic guy. If, if we can get two defensive tackles to kind of create pressure up the middle, that would be great. We have such little depth at defensive tackle that even though I do like this speed rusher here, I it just feel like Michael Hall is the way to go. Truthfully, I like uh, Adisa Isaac as well, but we're pretty okay, I think, with our power rushing setup. So if Gabriel Murphy's still there, maybe in round five, we can. I mean, the other things I'm looking at is I do need to get a running back. Maybe grab Blake Corum. I actually thought about doing that now, but I think we can wait. Uh, the running backs here with the start today mod, they will, or with this draft class, I guess, they will come in rated like in the mid-70s still. So we could probably still grab one of these guys later on. There was a left tackle. I really liked he wasn't on my favorites list, uh, but Julian Pearl, another nice player. And again, there's there's some other spots here we could have done, but you know I think in the end I just have to kind of trust my board a little bit, go with the position, and and most importantly a player that I think could really potentially be a, a nice player here picked at the end of the third round. So we're gonna go Michael Hall Jr., defensive tackle, just 21 years old, another regular Dev player, not a huge surprise there. So we'll see if he's somebody that can uh, develop, especially when we get into the offseason training. The very next pick, Blake Corum goes to the Packers. And the pick right after that is Adisa Isaac going to the Lions. Gabriel Murphy, the speed rusher we were looking at, he went second pick in the fourth round. And then the very next pick after that, Julian Pearl, left tackle out of Illinois, goes to the Patriots. So with the fourth pick in the fifth round, we're going to be going to Cedric Johnson here, speed rusher out of Ole Miss. Actually pretty happy with him falling. Again, missing out on a couple of the other edge rushers that we were looking at. He's got some really nice nice athletic traits. He's not very strong, obviously, but I still think he's got some nice uh, scores there. I can see, you know, looking at the single-digit numbers. I mean, he's got the 40-yard dash, the cone, shuttle. So, I mean, that's six right there. Total numbers that are in single digits. And for this late of a pick, I think that's pretty good. Elite acceleration can get around the edge there. Still got good change of direction and speed and agility. So again, kind of a situational uh, situational pass rusher, but that's okay. I mean, block shedding could come out really good. I mean, his finesse, I don't know. We'll have to see. He's probably not going to be. I mean, with it being a speed rusher, if it was reversed with power moves and finesse moves, maybe I'd be a little more excited. But bit of an injury risk here too so I don't know it, it's a flyer as all picks are at this point in the draft but this is who we're going with Cedric Johnson let's see what we get 88 acceleration 
So yeah, I love his size, six foot three, two sixty five. So we'll see if he's able to pop here in uh, the off season. So we'll see if he's able to pop here in the training camp. Fifth round, 27th pick. There's still a handful of players on our favorites list. A lot of them are receivers. But just kind of going through, this is where I actually start to kind of balance uh, team need as well. I mean, right now, again, we're just taking flyers on guys. You just don't know. It's kind of like buying cheap lottery tickets. And we will probably grab another one of these receivers at some point. I don't really care. I mean, I like Brendan Rice. I like Jalen McMillan. But we've already drafted a receiver. That's not a reason not to double dip. We've done that at a few positions. But what I'm starting to look at is just positions that I know I still want to grab a guy. And so, like, Marshawn Lloyd is a guy. Uh, he's not exactly what I wanted, but I still think he can come in and, and compete for that starting running back role, even being picked this late. You'd be surprised how highly rated the running backs are in these draft classes that have been edited, which is realistic. I mean, rookie running backs can come in and contribute. I would like to get some depth on the offensive line, and I see there's still a day three tackle on the left side. There's a couple on the right side. Same thing at the interior. You got like three guys between the guards position, guard positions and center. And then maybe, you know, middle linebacker is another spot. But really just playing the numbers game. And again, this is not like the world's greatest strategy, but uh, unless I really want to kind of like dig through and look for like maybe one of these guys down here that are uh, potentially, you know, UDFAs or something, it looks to me like Marshawn Lloyd is going to be our pick. So Marshawn Lloyd here in the fifth round out of USC. On the clock now, the Buffalo Bills. Not terrible. 91 acceleration is nice. I'd rather actually have better acceleration than even top end speed at running back. So he's going to have to change his jersey number, though. Very next pick is Jalen McMillan, one of the receivers I was looking at there. Two possibly pick there at the end of the fifth round. Four more picks to go. A lot of that, I guess, depth options we were looking at have been gone. All of those linemen that were at least day three guys are gone. So we're going to go with Darius Muasua, I think is how you'd say it. Linebacker out of UCLA. I actually like this guy. I think he can, again, we're talking sixth round pick here. So he's 23, pass coverage linebacker, but he's got a lot of those kind of top 10, top 9 uh, single digit rankings there at the Combine and College Pro Day. So he's a pretty athletic guy. He can jump a lot. I mean, he, he really can be a, a pretty good coverage linebacker, it looks like. So great acceleration is going to help change the direction and that kind of thing. It's also uh, got hit power of B, so I mean, he I think he can be a decent player. At the very least, he's going to give us a, a nice backup middle linebacker. And the reason why I start to kind of focus on needs a little bit is, especially if you're tight against the budget, it's really important because a, a backup veteran could cost you, you know, a couple million dollars. This guy is going to cost me a quarter of that or even a fifth of that maybe. So you can really start to save some cap space. You can do the same thing with like a punter or a kicker. And so, anyway, this makes sense. We're going to grab one of the only kind of, you know, decent depth guys we could still, I guess, slot into our roster who will probably make the team. And we're going to go make that pick now. 85 speed, 90 acceleration. Yeah, he could definitely have some potential there. Well, all that's left as far as day three talent is cornerbacks, receivers, some kickers, and punters. And we're actually going to go with a kicker here for the reason I mentioned earlier, that it's going to save us about $3.5 million by getting rid of our 40-year-old kicker, Matt Prater. And so Joshua Cardi is who we're looking at here. I actually really like, normally I get a little worried when I see A awareness because that kind of says like no dev trait, but it also means a really high overall, typically, at least that's what it's meant before. So he's going to come in ready to go as a rookie. And of course, the physical we're looking at here, kick power, great. I would love to see elite, but truthfully, I go for it a lot on fourth down. I don't like to kick long field goals. I don't really like the added risk. Uh, and that's in real life. And even in Madden here with one of the uh, gameplay mods that we have, which is like it hides the kick arc. It makes kicking much harder. Like literally, it's just it's harder to kick extra points, everything. So I tend to just, if it's fourth and four at the, you know, 40 yard line, I'm not kicking a 50, 70 yard field goal. I'm probably going to be going for it. So Joshua Cardi. It's going to make sense versus Prater, who really doesn't in what we're trying to run here. He makes a lot of money. He's old. We don't need a kicker with 98 power. So Joshua Cardi is going to be our guy, and I think he's going to come in right away and be our new kicker. Kick power 95. That's not bad. So, yeah, really, really happy with that pick. Round seven, I mean, do what you want. You can have some fun. I mean, here, we're going to actually draft a center that I plan to convert to left tackle. I just like his size, six foot four, 320. 
potentially has some good pass blocking and he's going to player that looks like he'll stay healthy versus like a, a actual guy who is a left tackle who's six foot five, two ninety four. That's a little undersized for that position in my book. So we're going to do this again with the beauty of the Madden mods is that the game will kind of move this guy around if I get creative and kind of put him in the into the proper spot in the depth chart. So Rusty Stats, a center out of Texas Tech, but we're going to be moving him to left tackle. He's a seventh round pick, so we're not terribly pick, worried about what he turns out to be. And with our last pick here, we're going to be going wide receiver Malik Washington. I was also looking at Johnny Wilson. They're kind of very opposite receivers if you look at their size. Six foot six, two thirty-seven here with Wilson. Washington's five foot eight, one ninety-four. Of course, we're looking to do a lot of that short passing game, kind of get the balls out to these receivers and kind of let them make some moves. And I think this guy, I mean, this is a guy I was looking at much earlier in the draft too. I did like Malik Washington. There's just been, the receivers just haven't really been drafted here, but still pretty athletic. And I like some of these, I guess, ratings that could pop around that A range. It's, it's unlikely, but he can run some good routes for us. He can catch in traffic potentially. Spectacular catch. I mean, this is a guy that can, you know, really be explosive over the middle potentially. And so, you know, again, kind of an opposite spectrum here is, is Johnny Wilson. He was a guy that like, well, maybe we could get down around the goal line and kind of throw him some, some jump balls and that kind of thing with that spectacular catch rating and short route running and of course uh, catching and him being six foot seven or where it, what six foot six. But truthfully, that's kind of a low strategy play is kind of the the goal line jump ball i know people like it and it's fun to watch but i mean there's been a lot of discussion around that being a uh, kind of not really your best option there around the goal line and so i think malik washington makes a lot of sense here he's still got some decent talent from i guess where we're picking so malik washington will be our last pick here in the draft we're double dipping at receiver and i'm okay with that so 93 speed 93 92 acceleration this is kind of what we were looking to see here just an athletic guy. He's obviously not very tall, but a kind of a running back that we can put out there at receiver. All right, so we've advanced to preseason week one. I have since run, I guess before I advanced to that, I ran the auto balance rosters. Again, just using the schedule here. Free agent recap, I'm sorry, draft recap, which is where we did this. And what that does is, again, it just kind of moved players who were, like if you had a left guard starting at right guard, it would change that player's position to right guard. And you can manipulate this a little bit if you want to kind of stay in bounds with what the CPU teams are doing. I did a little bit of that just to kind of give me some balance. So we are now in the preseason week one, and we're going to be running the progression tool, which I've already done, but I do want to show you because it is freaking awesome. And then we'll also, there's an option for like this free agent lottery. We will need to run auto match scheme again here, but we will be doing that uh, in a little bit here. So I wanted to show you the progression report because guys, this is awesome. This is what the Madden Money community is all about. You're of course looking at the entire NFL. And so you're seeing right here, like Caleb Williams, the first pick in the draft. We obviously don't know his trait, but look at his jump. He had a plus eight. He's up to an 86 as a rookie. Wow. Justin Fields also got a plus four. So he's up to an 80. So you, you can bet that the Bears will probably be trading. Justin Fields is kind of surprised. I think had we started maybe like the season before where morale and things like this came into play, Justin Fields would have been traded already. So again, that first season, it takes a little bit of time for that to set in. So we could, of course, go through every single team. We're not going to do that. I do want to go through my team, though, and just kind of show you how things looked. And we will go position by position. So it's not going to show every single player I'm not exactly sure what excludes. I think just as players get older and things like that. So like Clayton Toon, for instance, normal dev, he did not have any kind of bump. He stays at a 62. I don't know if he'll make the team. Maybe as a quarterback three. Kyler Murray, though, we were hoping to get a bump. We did, plus five. And of course, you could scroll over. I have this maximized. And when you, it's a long story how you have to maximize this piece of software. But when you do it, you kind of lose some of the view. Um, so you could look at different ratings and whatnot. But for now, we're just focused on overall. Michael Carter, one of our backup running backs. Now, he's a normal dev, but he had the only one of a bump plus one. And so he's kind of fighting that rookie that we picked for kind of a running back two. And so you notice my starting running back isn't even listed here. So again, he's 29. I'm guessing maybe that's why uh, at a certain age the, uh, you're not going to get bumps in players. We don't have any fullbacks. Receiver, big news here. Malik Neighbors, our second pick of the draft, pick 23, goes up plus seven. His acceleration, we can see at least it's up to 96. He's an 83 overall. He's already our number one receiver. 
in preseason week one. So that's huge news. Nobody else had any sort of movement at the receiver position, though. Uh, we go to tight end. Trey, uh, Trey McBride gets a plus one. That's all there is at tight end. Right tackle. I ended up moving that rusty stats guy to right tackle instead of left tackle. And so he gets a plus five. So look at that. Wasn't he a seventh round draft pick? I think he was actually even slotted as being like an undrafted talent. So here we have a guy that's like, this is a serviceable guy. This guy could like start in a pinch already as a seventh round rookie. You don't see that in regular Madden. So that's super cool. Ben Brown plus three there. Okay. I mean, we're just kind of got some depth position, I guess, people fighting out for the backup right guard spot. Center, nothing happened. Left guard, we moved a center over to left guard, but again, nothing took place there. Same thing there. At end, Ujulari gets a nice plus three. That will be nice. That really solidifies him as our starting right end and speed rusher. Cedric Johnson, I was hoping would get a bump, and that hasn't happened yet. I'm also not sure why these are question marks, even though he's a normal dev. My guess is just like they've replaced rookie with question mark because a lot of guys do have those. But Cedric Johnson, unless something's completely different, because all the rookies show that, uh, but they'll still be normal in game. Looking at defensive tackle, I was really hoping to see some bumps here. We didn't. Byron Murphy comes in, though, as a 77. So, again, even though he's normal dev, that's pretty normal. He'll still progress, and he's young enough that he could still get some of these bumps. Uh, but he's probably just going to be like a guy who's in the 80s for most of his career. So, like a serviceable starter, but not the superstar we were, we were hoping he'd be. Michael Hall gets a, a, a plus one bump there, but well, we're still pretty weak. I'm actually considering switching back to like a 3-4 defense at this point. It's pretty weak. Left end, Cameron Thomas, really nice to see. Now we have two guys who are 75. That's not great, but they're young. So Zayvon Collins, Cameron Thomas can share some uh, action there at left end. Right outside linebacker, you can see there. I'll just start flipping through some of these. Look at this, Isaiah Simmons, plus eight, up to an 85 overall. His triumphant return to the Cardinals. That is awesome. Cornerback, again, was hoping to see some movement. Didn't see anything here. Kalen King, our rookie in the third round, comes in at a 70 overall. Nate Wiggins comes in at a 72. I was really hoping between like our existing younger players and these rookies that somebody would bump and they haven't. So like, oh my gosh, cornerback two. I might have to like manually handle cornerback two. The good news is we're super deep at safety. You don't see it here, but of course, Buda Baker is still on the team. And strong safety, we got two guys who are... Uh, very, very capable, and Jalen Thompson, and check out CJ GJ's bump up to an 89. That is awesome. So, also getting a really nice bump. Our rookie kicker. It's making a lot of sense now. We can save some money, and we have a kicker who's already up to an 80. So, super, super cool there. Of course, we could go through all of the other teams, but guys, oh, this is such a cool thing. These, this, my franchise tool hub is just such an awesome tool. There's so much we haven't even really talked about yet. And uh, we'll probably get into that in some other videos. So let's keep moving forward. We're now using part of the utility called the free agent lottery. And what I've done is you can set your parameters. So I've changed a few of these. I have it like we're only worried about players 24 or younger. We're only worried about players 70 or higher. And we're doing all positions. And then what it did, it's, it automatically kind of says like, ah, like here's this guy who really popped in progression. He's an undrafted rookie running back. He's up to an 82. And this would kind of you know, I guess simulate the the whole idea that like an undrafted running back could come in and like catch the league by storm and like win, win the rookie of the year or something like this and have a thousand yards. And so what's cool is it's populated the teams that would maybe both most benefit from having a guy like this. And so we, we are on there. Arizona is on here somewhere as we could definitely use a running back. And then what I've done is I, I've, I have not added my team to anybody. I have taken my team off and you can do this just by clicking on your team. Like I didn't want Riley Patterson. So uh, if he was there for Arizona, I would have undone that. And I'm really only interested in just undrafted rookies at this point. I've already filled out the roster kind of how I want. And I don't really know what our cap space looks like. So I didn't want to sign like any veterans that might've popped up. And so you can go through here and this is all based on just kind of the team's like depth chart and their talents. And I also ran the, the, the module before this where it kind of rebalances the, the scheme setup for a team. So if a team's running a four, three and they drafted like a, a pass rushing outside linebacker, they have now sh uh, shifted that player to a defensive end. 
and then I ran the lottery. And that's going to just kind of make it populate a little bit more realistically. And so that they're kind of entered into the, uh, I guess, lottery pick of the correct players that would most benefit the team. So again, you can set the parameters however you want. I'm really just going after some younger players. Like I said, I've never done this before. So I'm hitting run lottery here for the first time. So let's see what happens. All right, so we ran it and it just shows the results. So we did not get Amani Bailey. 49ers did good for them that Layden Robinson guard looked really good and again if you there's no spoilers in this because if you go through and play this even if you had the same draft class your progression is going to look totally different than mine and so you can just kind of see I'm just scrolling to see if the Cardinals got anybody I don't really think so I'm not going to concern myself too much with who went where but that's how that works really really cool utility we're now back in the tool hub and I will be pulling up the schedule again. We have gone through the progression tool outside of this video. I already ran the auto match scheme and then we just did the lottery. And so what I was told now is to actually run the match scheme again, because again, like that team that signed that really nice left guard, maybe they'd rather have that at right guard that will kind of just clean that up one last time. So we're going to run that. And then that's it. We're ready to jump into the preseason. After preseason week one's done, we'll be coming at, back in here and doing the auto balance rosters for preseason week two, which again is part of the schedule here. So we have just gotten into just a few of these different mods that are out there. I mean, this is just, it really, really changes the game of Madden. Guys, it's just been awesome so far. All right, guys, that's going to do it. We have this team just about ready. We're at the preseason. We're going to have a ton of cuts to do eventually. So probably in the next episode, I'll kind of give you an update on the team, kind of who made the roster and that sort of thing. We didn't really have any huge home runs there with the free agent lottery. We just have a lot of depth. But again, this team actually turned out better than I thought. They're an 80 overall, 79 defense, 81 on the offense. We'll see. I'm just hoping to kind of win a handful of games. But it's going to be a long season. But let's see how we can do. So anyway, thanks guys. I appreciate you checking out. Like the video, subscribe. Let me know if you have questions you want to see more. Let me know how you're doing with your Madden franchise and if you've tried it on PC because it's just been really, really cool. So again, huge shout out to the Madden community for that. And I will see you guys next time.